So, welcome to our viewers by Facebook. We appreciate you taking time out of your Sunday morning this morning to join us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Welcome to Preparing the Way, those of you who are newcomers, and welcome to our Sunday morning service. If you're looking for a church, we'd love to have you consider Preparing the Way as your home church. If you're just visiting for the first time and just trying us out, let us know what we can do to make you comfortable. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your presence. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. You're so faithful. You said in your word that if we were turned to be unfaithful, yet you would remain faithful. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us Holy Spirit as our seal of the covenant. Anoint your word this morning. Anoint this conduit. Make your word alive and fire, refining, purifying transforming fire yes. Yes. this morning, Father. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for shedding your blood for our sins, for our iniquities, for our sicknesses and our diseases. If you need prayer for your body this morning, I want you to stand up. <clears throat> All across the room. When Jesus walked the earth, he had several incidences where people came to him and said, Lord, my servant, my daughter, my this, my that, is home afflicted. And Jesus said, I will come. They said, no, 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 just, just say the word. Right. Psalms 103 said, he sent his word right. and healed all their diseases. Oh, he yeah. sent it. He just spoke the word. The Roman centurion said, just say the word. So I don't have to lay hands on you. I would, but it's not necessary because the word is capable of touching right where you're standing. I speak healing to you, Jill, Randy, Rhonda. I speak heal to you, Debbie. I speak healing to you, Kimberly. I speak healing to you, Rayanne. I speak healing to you, Leah, Jay, Paul, Glenn, <clears throat> Sharon, Randy, Peggy, and Reggie, June, I speak healing to everyone standing in this room. If I've left you out, wave at me. Uh, Brian, I speak healing to you. In the name, I pronounce you healed. In the name of Jesus, I declare health and wholeness. Jesus sent the disciples and he said, go forth and heal. He didn't say pray. So I heal you in the name of Jesus. And by his blood and by his stripes, you're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Now give him thanks. <clears throat> I want to share two stories with you this morning. One from Luke and one from Matthew. One in Matthew is also covered in Mark 7. But two, about two ladies. There's something about women that pray. Men pray too, but women have a connection that men don't have. <laughs> women carry life within them. Men think about it, and therein lies the danger. But women carry life, and they're sensitive to that type of thing. And when Holy Spirit says, do, most women say, Men want to debate. 
Men want to reason. Men want to be like Zechariah, John the Baptist's dad. He said, well, how can this be? I mean, let's, let's talk about this, Gabriel. Like he's going to reason with Gabriel. And whereas the mother of Jesus, Mary, said, be it unto you, your handmaiden as you say. These two women, you've heard their stories. In Luke chapter 18, Luke says, Jesus told a parable. Now, a parable is like an allegory. It's a story that's really not true, but it, it, it fits a true life circumstance. He said, Jesus gave a parable to them that men ought always pray and not lose heart. Do you ever lose heart when you pray? This means yes. Yes. Prayer is hard work. It's hard work. It costs to pray. Not because it, it just takes time out of your schedule or something like that, because a lot of times we don't stop to pray. We pray as we go. Prayer on the go. But to lock in fervent prayer, unrelenting prayer, determined prayer is work. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. It's not just now I lay me down to sleep, but oh God, have mercy. When there are no other options, when there's no door number two, door number three, when there's no other avenues, when there's no other alleys you can turn down, when it's only him, as David said, one thing, it's work. It's work. He said, he spoke a parable to them that men should always pray and not lose heart. Some translations say, don't faint. Don't faint. He said, there was a lady in this city. And there was a judge in this city who, who was an unjust judge. He didn't care about people. He had no care about what people thought about him. He was going to do what he wanted to do, like he wanted to do. Kind of like people in Washington, D.C. Yeah. <laughs> but he said he was an unjust judge. Now, there was a widow in that city, this woman, everybody say widow. And she came saying to him, give me justice from my adversary. The King James says, give me justice, give me vengeance. No, avenge me, avenge me of my adversary. Now, we don't know who the adversary was in this parable. We don't know what the problem was. We don't know what her situation was. But she said, I want justice. I want justice. Now, this judge was her only source of justice. She was resolved that this was my final stop. When the doctors have told you, we've done all we can do. Who do you turn to? When the doctors have said, we've done all we can do. What are you going to do? But God. She came to this unjust judge and said, give me justice. And he would not for a while, but afterwards, he said within himself, within himself, Though I don't fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, the one say troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. She weary me. Now, he complained about her weary. I have trouble with that word. 
wearying him, causing him a lot of weary. She was just a pain in the neck. The word weary, weary means stun me. And it's taken from Paul's writings in Corinthians where it says that I buffet my body. It was a, it's a boxing term. It stunned me. Weary me means give me a black eye. She was con- he was concerned. This woman means business. If I don't listen to her, she might assault me. I mean, you got to figure, you know, he's walking down the aisle at Walmart. Next round she corners, she goes, I want justice. I want justice. He says, he goes to church on Sunday morning. She meets him at the front door. Give me justice. Avenge me of my adversary. She gets a post on Facebook, or he gets a post on Facebook in big, bold letters, justice from my adversary. She would not relent. She would not stop. She wouldn't take no for an answer. She wouldn't back down. He was saying, I'm scared this woman's going to really give me bad, bad times. And then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God, and shall God not avenge his own elect? Everyone say, I am his elect. I am his elect. You are his elect. If you're born again, if Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, sincerely, seriously, then you are God's elect. You have been chosen. You didn't choose him. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. You were selected, elected. He said, shall not God avenge them, his own elect, who cry out to him day and night. Prayer's hard work. It'll cost you sleep. Now, I love my sleep. I don't want God bothering me when I'm sleeping. I want to sleep. But he does. He does. And if he doesn't bother me, Gina will. (laughs) Because it bothers her first. That she's a woman. She's more responsive. That life thing. He says... Though I cry out day and night, incessantly, repetitively, repetitiously, sincerely, fervently, relentlessly, undying, day and night, not giving up. He said, though he bears long with them, I'll tell you, he will avenge them speedily. I will avenge them speedily, quickly. I won't be late. Has God ever been late? How many of you are still waiting? Come on, come on, come on. How many are still waiting? For that speedily. I am. Numbers 26, I think it is. I don't have it in my notes. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said, will he not do So he says, I will avenge them speedily. Your concept of speedily and his concept of speedily may not align. 
But who's right? He's never wrong. He's never wrong. He said, I will avenge them speedily. Now, if I don't finish this this morning, I'm going to finish it next week. But prayer, like I said, is hard work. But it is the most powerful weapon in our arsenal. And yet the most neglected. The most neglected. But the, if we ever lock into the power of fervent, sincere, hard, earnest prayer, we're going to be dangerous. And Satan knows it. Let me tell you, he's got one design on you, to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's going to interrupt your prayers in any way he can. He's going to lay out every weapon, every device, every scheme he can to try to discourage you, shut you down, get you to stop praying earnest, sincere, fervent, unrelenting prayer. He wants you to shut up. He wants you to back away from the throne of God. He wants you to quiet down, give up, go home, and say it didn't work. And it works. Don't it? I mean, if it ain't broke. He attacks us. Relentlessly. He is relentless. He doesn't take vacations. He doesn't take time off. So we can't. We can't afford to. We can't afford to relax in our prayers, in our pursuit, in our determination. We can't, we can't stop. We can't grow weary. We can't lose heart because the day we stop is the day he advances. It's because of the power of persistent prayer that Satan has arrayed all of his energies against us as we determine to live a life of fervent prayer. Have you determined to live a life of prayer? That should be our defining quality as Christians. People of prayer. What defines your life as a Christian? He wants us to turn away from the throne of God, throw our hands in the air and give up to discourage us and convince us that our prayers are ineffective, powerless, and that God doesn't care or listen to our cries. He wants us to quit because He knows that if we get determined, tenacious, persistent, unrelenting in our pursuit of breakthrough, He's doomed. He's doomed. He's doomed. He has no other source and recourse but to give up. He has no other option but to. He's going to be like that unjust judge. He's going to say, Get this woman out of my face. Get this woman off my back. I can't take it anymore. Give her what she wants. Now, God is not an unjust judge, but the devil is. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's all he cares about you. The greatest warfare takes place in the life of a praying believer. If you're an intercessor, a true, true, on your knees, called, anointed intercessor, 
You know what I'm talking about. It's rough. It's warfare constantly in your life. If he can't attack you, he attacks someone you love. If he can't attack you, he attacks your finances. If he can't attack you, he attacks this, he attacks that, he attacks those, and he attacks them. Because he wants to cripple you and discourage you and stop you from praying. Because he knows your prayers make a difference. Histories are changed because of your prayers. Destinies are altered because of your prayers. Lives are saved because of your prayers. People are healed because of your prayers. Courses in history and destiny are altered and changed because somebody prayed. World War II was won because people prayed. The American Revolution was won because people prayed. This coronavirus is going to go away only because people pray. Not because of the scientists that develop a vaccine. And so what are we doing? No, we're looking for door number two. Boy, I sure hope they come up with a vaccine before my birthday. I wanted to have a party. <laughs> if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I'll heal them and I'll heal their land. I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. The devil knows that if you will just stand, when you've done all, Ephesians says, when you've done all, when you've done all, what? Stand. Stand. When you've done all, you stand. And he wants you to, to he, he knows that if you will just stand and remain anchored in hope, never silent, never losing heart, never growing weary, that something's going to happen. Something's going to change, and it won't be to his good. It's not going to go well for him. He knows that if you stand before the throne of God day and night, praying, praying for that breakthrough, pushing, fasting. Everybody say fasting. Y'all know what fasting is? Just wonder. Fasting and praying day and night and day and night and day and night, week and after a month, after a year, something's going to break through. Something's going to change. He's going to get saved. He's going to get saved. That breakthrough's going to come. You say, God, what if it's too late? It won't be. It won't be. And he wants you to quit and give up and go home. And I'm running out of time. Page two. Satan will devise any scheme to weaken our faith and shut us up. So Jesus put forth a question. Nevertheless, he said, in spite of all this about a woman praying night and day, in spite of her, and, and, and you know, beside the point that she never gave up, he said, will when the Son of Man comes, and He's coming, people. That's not a fantasy. That's not a Steven Spielberg movie. That's not a Star Wars trilogy. He's coming sooner than you think. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He really find faith on the earth? Why did he throw faith in this thing about this woman and this unjust judge? He's like, by the way, will he find faith? Will I find faith on the earth when I come back? Because prayer and faith go hand in hand. You can't have one without the can't have one without the other. You millennials don't have a clue. If Satan can, I got to watch this. If Satan can kidnap your faith, he gets your prayer life too. 
B-O-G-O, buy one, get one. He gets two for the price of one. If he can dis- discourage you from praying, it's because you've lost faith. So prayer is foundational to faith, and faith is of the rock on which prayer rests. So Jesus is saying, will I really find faith upon the earth when I return? Will I really find people locked into prayer, praying, believing, or will Satan have won the battle? And people have given up. Jesus is coming back for a praying church. He is. He's coming back for a praying church. It's a serious question. It's a serious, it's like that seriously dead. It's a serious question. Will he find faith upon the earth? Now, people say, well, everyone has faith. Paul said in Romans that everyone has been given a measure of faith. But you also have muscle. Steve, you got muscle. Travis, you got muscle. James, James got muscle. I got muscle but not like James. James is karate and push-ups. And how many push-ups you do with Jay, James? 100? 200. I can do two. Everybody's got muscle. But how do you develop that muscle determines the weight you can lift. Everybody's born with muscle. As a Christian, you're born again. You have faith as a gift issued into you. But you've got to develop that faith. And Jesus is asking, will I find people who are developing their faith through prayer? How many of you have ever had a prayer answered? We need to pray for those of you that haven't. A prayer answered will stimulate you, encourage you, Ignite more faith within you. And you go, ah, oh, it works. It works. How many of you ever prayed and your prayer didn't get answered? What did that do to your faith? See? Can't happen. Can't allow it to happen. Can't allow it to happen. Strong faith is essential to unrelenting, tenacious prayer. Strong faith expects an answer. When you pray, do you pray hoping? Gee, I hope this works. Wonder if God's going to hear me this time. That widow said, went to that unjust judge, and she says, I will not be denied. I won't take no for an answer. I'm not going to quit. I am not going to quit. She was expecting justice. She hounded him how often? Day and night. Unrelenting. We don't know what unrelenting means because we are not a people of longevity. What, what, is it, what, what have you been unrelenting about? You remember when you were in love? You remember? Remember, Albert? <laughs> Remember, Ross? <laughs> Still is. How unrelenting you were to steal their affections, to convince them, I'm the one. I'm your man, or I'm your woman. I'm the one for you. I'm, I'm the one God, cho- I'm the one that destined for you. You are my destiny. Molinos don't want to think that. <laughs> relenting, unrelenting, <clears throat> unrelenting, expecting an answer. 
Why pray if you don't expect an answer? Why bother? You say, well, I hope. That's not faith. Faith knows. I got a little sign in my office. It said, faith is not believing God will. It's knowing He will. And that widow woman knew. She knew. This man has my answer. And I'm not going to give him any rest until he gives it to me. She hounded him incessantly because she knew, she expected, she wasn't willing to quit. Are you willing to quit? What's it going to take for you to give up? What will Satan have to do to you to get you to shut up? Sadly to say with some, it won't take much. Just boo! And we tuck our tail. But with some others, it's like that widow woman. If I don't get you at Walmart, I'll get you at Kroger's. If I don't get you at Kroger's, I'll see you Sunday morning. But you're going to listen to me. You're going to give me justice because it's within your power to do it, and I'm not going to give you sleep. I'm not going to give you rest. I'm not going to give you a vacation. I will hound you. I will hassle you. I will torment you day and night until you give me justice. Hallelujah. Until you give me justice. Now, what does justice look like? It's different to every one of us sitting in this room. But you deserve it. You deserve it. And it will come to you if you just don't quit. When? If I knew, I'd be a millionaire. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. With some of you, listen to me, look up here. Your answer is that far away. You've been praying for days, weeks, months, maybe years, and your answer is just that close. Don't give up. Don't stop. Don't quit. Now I want to ask you one question. Before we leave, how's your relationship with Jesus? On a scale of one to ten, are you knocking on heaven's gates at ten? Yay, come on, Jesus, come back now. Or are you down at the one level thinking, oh boy, if he came back now, I'd be toast? <laughs> Where's your life with Jesus this morning? Is Jesus Lord of your life? Is He the most important thing that you live for? Is He the most essential part of your life? If you can't say, I can't live without Him, I must have Jesus. He is the one thing I long for. Then maybe we need to talk. If Jesus is not the Lord, not a Lord, but the Lord of your life, I don't want you to leave this room this morning in that condition if you don't want to. Now, if you're fine, hunky-dory, satisfied right where you are, I'm not talking to you. But if you came in this house this morning searching, not for a church. Church never saved anybody. Only Jesus saves. And there's no mutations of Jesus. 
There's only one Jesus. And there's only one way to the Father, and that's through him. So if you're here this morning and you need to know Jesus better than you know him, I want you to come and stand down here. I'm not going to slap you around. You're not joining this church. I'd love for you to come to be a part of preparing the way ministries on a regular basis, but that's not what we're after that right now. We're after connecting you with the Son of God, the living God himself. And if that's you, and you want someone to pray with you, why don't you come down here right now? We're not going to embarrass you in front of anybody. We're going to send you to another room with a counselor, and they're going to talk to you, lead you in some prayer, pray with you. And that'll be the end of it. Anybody? Let's on. Well, Travis, come here. Bible study with my mom on the phone. But you just need some situation I, I got some I got some things that, you know, I need to, you know, I just need some prayer. You know, I need somebody to bind with me, you know, 18 and 20 matches. Okay. You know. This man right here is a prayer warrior, is about as strong as any I know. He's gonna take you in the back office right here. Okay. Anyone else? Let's stand to our feet. Are you going to quit? Are you going to give up? we got one woman to go. We'll visit her next week. We didn't get to our second woman, but we'll get to her next week. Don't give up. Don't quit. Day and night is hard work, but the rewards are immeasurable. Your answer may be just that far away. Just that far away, Martha. Just that far away, Leah. Roberta, right there. Right there. Right there, Dennis. Right there, Ray. Right there. Right there. Right there, Mike. Right there, Sarah. Right there, Mitch, Shannon. Right there. Right there, Angela. Right there. Right there, Peyton. Peyton, you're an asset to the kingdom of God that you discount because you think other people discount you. And God says, I hold you in such high esteem. I set you forth as a trophy in my showcase of mercies and grace. Will y'all learn anything? Yes. Yes. God bless you. Be safe. Look, be safe out there. We've got the dubious honor of being the number one place in the state for this virus. Let's change that this week. Let's change that this week. Prayer will do that. God bless you.